Well, hello. Today is actually Wednesday. And I normally do this on Sunday, but I thank God that today is the day that I get to do this. We are coming from Ephesians chapter 5, and we're going to start at verse 6 and go to verse 21. Father God, I thank you in the name of Jesus for this day. I thank you for your blessings. I thank you for the word that heals, delivers, and sets free. And that is my desire, Lord, that I decrease completely. And Holy Spirit, you come forth mightily with your words of what you have to say to your people. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Today we are talking about light versus darkness. That is wrong versus right. Uh, bottom line is we have to choose which one we are going to do. Are we going to be on the Lord's side, which is the right side? Who are you going to be on, the Lord's side or Satan's side? Because there are no in-betweens. Don't let people fool you on that. See, people will tell you, well, it's okay to do this, but we have to understand fully. We are responsible for the decisions that we make in our lives. And because of that, I keep saying it over and over again, the decisions that we make, they will affect not only our lives, but the lives of those who come after us and who are with us, meaning our family members, our friends, our associates. So we must be careful in what we do and how we choose the way that we do things, our decision making. So it says light versus darkness. Well, we already know that darkness cannot overcome light. That is Jesus and the Satan, Satan can never overcome Jesus. Jesus is the powerful one. He is our savior. He is the one who created the world. And because of that, yes, Satan will come in and like a flood. The enemy will come in like a flood. But who? The Lord will lift up a standard against him. Because again, Satan is a defeated foe. And because those who know the word of God and they teach the word of God, we should understand fully there is no fear because God has not given us the spirit of fear. He's given us the power, the, the love, power, and a sound mind. Let me go back again. God has not given us the spirit of fear. People fear Satan. There is no need to fear Satan because he is a defeated foe. And when we put the word on Satan, then he has to flee. So again, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but he's given us Love, power, and a sound mind. Those three things are so important in, a, in, a, in the lives of a Christian. Because we, are, we have to understand that when we put those things to work in our lives, then nothing can defeat us. Again, Satan is a defeated foe. Remember that. He comes in to kill, steal, and destroy but again, with the word of God, that is our weapon of warfare against him, against the enemy. So when we use the weapons of warfare, which is the word of God, then we are conquerors every single time. We win every single time because the word does not return back void. It is our powerful weapon of warfare. Let's go to this. It says verse five, six. Let no one deceive you with empty arguments. Let's just stop right there. The word of God is not debatable. It is not negotiable. It is what it is. It is the word, the true word of God that heals, delivers, and it sets free. And once we apply it to our lives, then we can get the benefit. We reap the benefits of what the God, God has promised in his word. He, his promises are yes and amen. And if we stand on those promises, they shall come to pass. Because what does the word say? Jesus said, we can ask anything. Go to our father and ask anything in his name, in Jesus name. And he will give it to us. He didn't say we might. He said, go to God, go to the father, ask anything in my name, according to the will, of course, according to the word, of course, and it shall be given to us. He said he'll give us the desires of our hearts, but there are stipulations that go along with that. That means that we have to be obedient to his words. So let's go here. Again, the word of God is not up for debate. 
It is the right way and the only way. So then it says, for God's wrath is coming on the what? The disobedient because of these things. What things? What things are coming on the disobedient? What things, that, what is the wrath of God that will come on the disobedient people? Well, we talked about that last week. The liars, the whoremongers, the, the cheaters, sexual immorality, the impure, things that are against God. Things that we know that he's written already in his word that says, look, if you do this again, go to Psalms. We had that three weeks ago. Psalm says, if you do this, then this will go well for you. You have the benefits of a good life. Why? Because you have obeyed my word. You have taken into consideration that I have set up these, this word, these precepts, this, this rule that I have. And that since you are following my rules, my regulations, just like, again, I keep going back to, it's just plain and simple. I keep going back to the laws of the land. It's the same thing. We have to obey the laws of the land. They were set up. How? By example, God gave the example for us to live by. And if we do not live by those rules, those regulations, then there are punishments. There's, he says it right here, disobedient, God's wrath. What is wrath? <laughs> His punishments. His punishment is coming on who? The disobedient. He didn't say the obedient. If we're obeying God, then we reap the benefits of the goodness of his, his of him and what he has for us. But if we are disobedient, then there are consequences always for disobedience. Then it says seven, therefore do not become their partners. Don't become partners of the liars and the cheaters and the, the whoremongers or the, the idolaters or the adulterers, sexual immorality. Don't become partners with them. See, we, we always have to pick and choose our friends. You know, when we were younger, our parents did that because they knew that if someone came into our lives that were not good for us, then our parents immediately said, no, you can't hang around them. Well, it's the same thing with God. Even though we're older and we can make our own decisions, we have to be discerning in everything that we say and we do, and especially the people that we allow into our lives because they can either help us or they can harm us. And you know, Satan comes again to kill, steal, and destroy. And how does he do that? He sends people in our lives that are not good for us. And if we are not discerning, if we cannot pick up immediately what they're about and their agenda, then we're in trouble. How do we pick up that they are good for us? You have to know the fruit and you know them by the fruit that they bear. If they are bearing fruit that is good, that is righteous, you will know it. But there, there's always something that will give you a sign, some little inkling that people will give away themselves because you cannot fool people for, for very long, especially those with discernment. It says the very elect will be fooled, yes. But if you keep your eyes stayed on the Lord and you understand that God's word is his word and is true and you stay in that word and you apply it to your lives, then he will open your eyes to your understanding to know and see that that person who comes as a wolf in sheep's clothing, you will recognize him. You will recognize her. And then immediately you will have to get them out of your life. Don't continue to allow people to stay in your life that is not good for you. That does not have the same, you don't have to agree on everything. But if they have your back, if they have your, if they want your well-being, if they want you to do well, if they want you to succeed, then you will know it. But you will also know that there's an agenda, that there's a trap set for you, that there's a deception somewhere. You will know that. You know why? Because you spent time with God and the Holy Spirit in you tells you, look, 
They're out for something different. They're not for you. They are really against you. And the very enemy, what did David say? It, I, I, hmm. it, have been okay. it would have been okay if it was an enemy. But it was my own brother, the one that I walked with daily that betrayed me. When people betray you, that is a that is a hole in the soul. That is a wound that is not easily soothed over. It just is not. But when we understand and we see that that person is not good for us, then again, get them out of your life. You can handle them with a long handle spoon. Like my grandma used to say, handle them with a long handle spoon. But don't, don't allow them to be in your, your business. Don't allow them to know what you're doing because they can wreck everything for you. You can't tell everybody everything. So when God gives us discernment, please, please be diligent in using that discernment. So he says, don't, don't become partners with them. Then verse eight says, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. See, we can't always think that we're always, always this, this wonderful person that we were. I can admit I'm the first one to raise my hand. I was in sin. I did a lot of stuff that I know that I'm not pleased with now. And I know that God wasn't pleased with. However, that's when I was in darkness. But then it says, you were once in darkness. Admit that. I admit that, yes, I was once in darkness. I was once in sin, doing all kinds of things that were against the will of God. But it says, but now. See, that's that transformation. That said, I gave my life over to Christ. And because of that, I'm a new creature in Christ. I'm a different person than I used to be. And thank God. Thank God that I came to my senses. Thank God that someone gave me the word of God. So it's so much and so powerful that I was like, Lord, I want to know more about this. You, I want to know more about who this Jesus is. Because the life that I'm living now is not good. But that person came along and gave me the word of God and showed me this is who Jesus is. This is a life that you can have. This is a peace that you can have that passes all understanding. You can't even understand that kind of peace if you're in the world. But when you have that peace, the peace of Christ, the mind of Christ, then it's just a beautiful, beautiful, peaceful life. You may not have all the riches that you want and all the material things and all the things that you wish for. Yes, God said he will give you the desires of your heart. And he does. God knows he's, he's given me so much. Do I want more? Absolutely. I want more because I have big dreams. But what he's given me thus far, I'm so thankful for. In all things, give thanks. That's what the Bible says. In all things, everything, give thanks. Because it is the will of God in Christ Jesus. So let's go on. It says, you were once in, dar in darkness, but now you're in light. You are light in the Lord. I am walking in the will of the Lord now. Where once time I was walking in darkness with Satan. We were walking hand in hands. Actually, we were hugging. But now, <laughs> this is such a beautiful relationship that I have with Jesus Christ. It is the best relationship I've ever had. And because of that, he adds other things to me. See, we have to seek ye first, Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. and Everything else will be added unto us. He does that for us, meaning he is my lover. He, he keeps me. He's my savior. But then he sends people in my life that love me just like he does. That's a beautiful thing, y'all. And then you're able to love people like he does because he's our example. See, he gives us the example of how to treat people, how to love on people, how to be kind and gentle. Those are the fruit of the spirit. Be kind and gentle, long suffering. Sometimes we, you know, we, we do throw, throw people away. Like, okay, sometimes you do have to get people out of your life. Those people that are not good for you. But then there are other times when it's like, you know what? You did me wrong. You did me wrong, but I'm not going to throw you away. See, there, there's, there's hope. There's hope for this relationship. There's hope for that friendship. There's hope for that marriage. 
How is it hope? Because we have the word of God that brings us together again. The fellowship. How can two or three walk together if they don't agree? But if you can come to an agreement and you can only do that by the word of God and the love that you have for people and the compassion, because everybody messes up. I've messed up. Did people throw me away? Mm -mm, no, they gave me another chance. They said, come on, Lynette. I'm okay with you now. You know, we had our little arguments. We had our little whatever, but it's okay. Why was it okay? Because I, admit, I admitted that I was wrong. See, that's the thing that people don't want to do either. They don't want to admit that they're wrong. That's staying in the darkness. When we can easily come to the light. And when we stay in the dark, that's stubbornness. That is, that is such a, a torturous kind of life to live. It's stubborn. We don't want to admit that we're wrong. But when we admit that we're wrong and we come to the conclusion, you know what? It's just like, just like repentance. It is. It is coming to Christ and saying, God, I messed up. I was in the world. It didn't do me any good. It didn't benefit me. I thought it was. And I thought I was happy because I may have had the material things, but my soul was wounded. I had a hole in my soul that only you healed. So because of that, I'm, I repent of my sins. I want to come back. I want you to take over my life. I want us to be in fellowship again because we cannot be in fellowship with Jesus if we are not walking in his will and we are not being an example for him. We have to understand that we can't, you can't have it both ways. I know we tried. I know I've tried. I've tried to straddle the fence. Let me be over here, Lord, because it's really good over here, but I know I want to stay with you. He says, no, you, you make a decision and you make it today because tomorrow's not promised you. In fact, next, the, the next minute is not promised to you. So make up your mind now before it's too late. <laughs> Y'all, there are many people who are in the grave right now who waited because they kept saying, I have another day or oh, I'll wait until I can get it right or I'll wait until the time comes where I think that I'm ready to come in to the body of Christ. We don't know what tomorrow may bring. We do not know when the Lord says it's time, your time is up here on this earth and we die. And there are many people who have died in their sins. And really, we don't wanna talk about it, but they are on their way to hell. And if you are not careful and you don't repent, you too will be on your way to hell. That's the sad part. And that's the part that I'm so thankful that I had a made up mind, but I can only do that. And I could have only done that because the persons that God placed in my life that sent me a word of encouragement, a, a word from God that says, you know what, daughter, you, you're going down the wrong path. You're doing the wrong thing and you may not get back. And because of that, because of that, and they came to me with love and kindness. They came to me with gentleness. They came to me with the word of God, which heals and delivers and sets free. Because of that, I am in the body of Christ. I am living for Christ Jesus. I am wanting others to get what I have gotten. And that is a wonderful relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ who died for me, who paid the penalty for my sins. And because of that, I want to give and get as many people to understand that the word of God is your only hope in having an eternal life with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and applying it to your life. This is a beautiful life, y'all. It really is. Is it difficult sometimes? Absolutely. Do you have to fight sometimes? All the time. We're in a spiritual warfare. We, we, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Don't, don't get that twisted. People who do you wrong, 
it's not them. It is a spirit that is working within them, that evil spirit. So we get upset with the person, but those who have a discerning spirit understand that we're not in a battle against that person who has flesh and blood, that person that you're standing in front of, that you really want to knock their head off, really, because of what they've done to you. But then you have to step back and say, Lord, I know it's not them. It is the spirit that is working in them. Do they allow it? Yes. Why? Because they don't have the word of God working in them that com combats that spirit. So we have to be more compassionate with people. Give them time? Yes. Sometimes you just have to stop and say, you know what? I, I have to give you some time. I have to marinate on what has happened. But if there's hope, in that relationship, if there's hope in that friendship, if there's hope in that marriage, then fight. Fight that spiritual battle. Fight till you cannot fight anymore. And you fight with prayer, fasting, and the word of God. Those are your weapons of warfare. So it says, so again, but now we are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Again, walk with kindness. What is children of light? Who are children of light? They're the children of God. Jesus Christ is the light. Is Jesus Christ is the light of the world. We are children of the light. So when we walk in the light, then we walk with kindness and meekness and humbleness. We, we, we have humility. We're not pride, prideful and boastful. We're kind to one another. We have compassion for those who are in need. Give to the poor always. The poor will always be with us. That's what the Bible says. Take care of the poor and the widows. Have compassion on them. See to it that people are good with their spirits. You can tell when a person is hurting. Don't be afraid to go up to them and say, ma'am, you okay? Sir, you okay? I do it all the time. I stop my car, stop my van. You okay? You, you, you need something? Can I pray for you? Because you would want somebody to do that for you. Then it says, verse nine, for the fruit of the light results in all goodness, not some goodness, all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Say that again. For the fruit, we will know them by the fruit they bear. If they're bearing good fruit, which is righteousness, good, and truth. Okay? It says, for the fruit of the light results in all, not some, but all goodness, righteousness. What is righteousness? We're living the right life according to the word of God. We're in right standing with Jesus Christ. We're doing the right thing when we could always do what's wrong. Wrong is always present. Wrong will always, pre it, it will present itself to us. Always. Every single day we have an opportunity to do wrong, to lie, to steal, to cheat, to do all kinds of things that are against the will of God, knowing that nobody's looking. Not a person, but always remember that God is always watching. See, that's who we should be concerned about. We think that just because no one is looking that we can take, we can steal, we can do whatever we want to do. But just remember this. The next time that temptation comes, and it will, then remember this. God is always watching you. And he's the only one that matters. He really is. So let's go on. It says, discerning what is pleasing in the sight of the Lord. What does it say? Discerning. You have a discerning spirit, those who are in Christ Jesus. We can discern. We can discern what is pleasing to the Lord. But even sinners know what's right and wrong. They just choose to do wrong. We have a choice. We should always choose what is right in the sight of God. It says what is discerning now, what is pleasing to the Lord. Verse 11, it says, don't participate in the fruitless works of darkness. What is fruitless? 
It's void. It's nothing. Nothing to it. There's no benefits to it. Only death, really. It comes down to death and destruction. All that is awful and bad. That's what that will produce. But righteousness, goodness will always produce good things in our lives. Truth. Tell the truth. See, it's easy to tell a lie sometimes. Really, it, we could just be talking and, and all of a sudden, oh, I, I told that lie. Then you got to go back and go, you know what? I lied. That wasn't true. That wasn't true. And guess what? Sometimes pride gets in the way and we don't want to do that. But when you do, I promise you, something will lift up off of you and you'll be like, Lord, I thank you. I might have been a little humiliated, you know, by saying what I said, but I got it right with you. And that's what matters. See, David said the same thing. He said, God, I sinned against you and only you. I sin God, I sinned against you. And I'm going to get it right. Because that's what matters the most is getting it right with Jesus Christ, getting it right with our, our Lord and Savior. That's the most important thing to live our lives in a way that is pleasing to God. Mm. Verse 11, it says, don't participate in the fruitless works of darkness, but instead, here we go. What do we do? Expose them. Expose their wrong. Expose what they're doing that is not in the will of God. See, we don't want to do that. We want to turn a blind eye and say, oh, I didn't see that or if you saw it, I'm not going to